the threat of a terrorist organization detonating an improvised nuclear device, IND, is very real. Our enemies are well funded and determined to strike us at home. With its relatively small size and weight, a 10 kiloton weapon is not difficult to conceal or transport. A 10 kiloton weapon is detonated in an urban center. Within millionths of a second, a luminous sphere of hot gases is formed. Temperatures may reach 10 million degrees centigrade, hotter than the sun. A strong updraft with inflowing winds called afterwinds is produced. The cloud may reach 5,000 feet in height and 1,000 feet in diameter. The initial response is key to saving lives, while awareness and strict adherence to procedures will protect responders from exposure to potentially lethal doses of radiation. For response purposes, the affected blast area is broken down into zones, beginning with ground zero and moving outward. No-go zone, moderate damage zone, light damage zone, and the fallout zone. The zone should be determined by the degree of observable physical damage. The EMP, electromagnetic pulse, may disable or permanently damage electronic equipment within three miles of ground zero effectively knocking out responders' communications and public broadcasting. Operational equipment brought into the EMP zone after the detonation will not be affected. Responders entering the light damage zone, roughly three miles out from ground zero, will immediately notice the prevalence of broken windows. Injuries will initially be fairly light, requiring self or only outpatient care. As responders move inward toward ground zero, Debris littering the streets, damaged vehicles, and downed power lines will make passage increasingly more difficult. Responders entering the moderate damage zone should expect significant damage to structures, including collapse and blown out interiors. Sturdier buildings of reinforced concrete may remain standing. Substantial rubble, overturned vehicles, and fires will be encountered. Lighter commercial structures will be unstable while most single-family houses will be destroyed. Visibility in the initial hours of response will be limited due to dust and smoke from fires. Additional hazards to responders in this zone include elevated radiation levels, downed power lines, and ruptured gas lines. The moderate damage zone will present the greatest opportunity for saving lives and should be the main focus area for rescue operations. Serious injuries from burns, Lying debris and crushing injuries should be expected. Any response tasks performed within the contaminated zones must have a dosimetry exposure plan in place to protect responders. Anyone with an unprotected line of sight of the burst up to two miles away may be subject to burn and severe eye injury, including blindness. While moving farther into the moderate damage zone, responders will need to be aware of the structural damage around them. When most buildings are collapsed or severely damaged, they have reached the no-go zone and should, under no circumstances, go any farther. At ground zero, the point vertically above or below the center of the blast, a crater with a radius of 20 meters is formed. From this point out to roughly one kilometer, just over half a mile is a no-go zone for rescuers for five to seven days. Few, if any, buildings will be standing. Rubble reaching a depth of 30 feet or more will make roads impassable. Anyone surviving the initial blast within the no-go zone will have received a lethal dose of the more intense initial radiation. They should be expected to die within the day. Within the first 60 minutes of a nuclear detonation, the most critical decision will be whether to evacuate or shelter in place those in the expected fallout zone. The primary recommendation is to initially shelter in place. Those in the open or in cars should seek larger structures and take refuge in the center of those buildings, placing as much distance between them and the fallout as possible. Communicating protective orders to the public will be crucial. The dangerous fallout zone may extend 10 to 20 miles from ground zero. The plume's direction is determined mainly by the upper atmosphere. This is not always apparent or may even be contradictory to ground-level winds. 
the most hazardous particles are seen as sand-sized grains. Lack of this apparent fallout does not mean radiation is not present. Monitoring is the most effective method of defining the fallout zone. Fallout is subject to rapid radioactive decay. Consequently, the dangerous fallout zone will shrink with time. An educated and well-informed public before, during, and after an event is a critical component of any response effort. Neighbor helping neighbor is key to saving lives. The overwhelming majority of consequence management tasks, such as providing essential services, decontamination, treatment, security, food, and shelter, will take place outside of the contaminated zones. Effective consequence management will determine how much additional loss of life there will be after the initial event.